Today's lesson, as you can see, is lesson 1-3, and we're talking about this uh, concept of rate of change and slope, and I hope you'll see that uh, after we conclude this lesson that uh, these are really uh, terms that are synonymous. Uh, rate of change, uh, or sometimes we say a constant rate of change, or an average rate of change, um, is really just another way of saying the slope, if there is a constant rate of change or an average rate of change, then that is a line that has a slope of whatever that number happens to be. Uh, so today's objective, uh, actually two, I, wanna, I want you to see how you can find rate of change from a uh, maybe a real world example. Um, just given some information, can we determine the rate of change uh, from one quantity related to another quantity? And then uh, going specifically to lines, can we determine the slope or rate of change of a line? Okay, we looked at this real world example today and uh, used, uh, we also defined what rate of change is uh, in definition language. Uh, rate of change is basically a ratio, and when you see the word ratio, you can think fraction. Comparing, if it's a fraction, then there's two components, how much one quantity changes on average relative to the change in another quantity. So uh, we have a formula that lets us uh, come up with this ratio, this fraction. We take the, uh, the quantity that we would assign a y variable to. Actually, there would be two of them. Notice it's a change in these two y quantities. And the way we come up with a change is we subtract the two. Uh, remember, it's, it's one quantity that has changed into either a bigger or a smaller quantity and uh, those two need to be subtracted. And then the bottom part of this fraction, this ratio, is a change in these two numbers that we would assign an x to. And when we're talking about um, gra graphing, uh, x, y is no problem. We know that uh, numbers that correspond to this axis would be <clears throat> labeled as x, and then numbers that correspond to the vertical axis would be y, and we've got these two coordinates. Um, here's an x, y. Here's an x, y. We just subtract y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and we can determine slope. Well, that's no problem when we're looking at a graph. But sometimes all we are given is information, and it's up to us to decipher um, what is the y what are the y variables in a particular problem that need to be subtracted and what are the x variables that need to be subtracted sometimes the challenge for some students is just understanding uh, which is which okay and and I'm hoping that with this example I can help you because uh, this uh, tends to be a hurdle that uh, some students uh, need to cross uh, in order to uh, be able to answer or set up these problems correctly. Okay, so in 2004, uh, we're told that 56,878 students applied to UCLA. In 2006, that number jumped up to 60,291. Okay, so over a two-year period, the increase is shown here. Okay. Now, I want you to, when, you, when you're given problems like this, uh, focus in on the instructions that are for you. And uh, here we are. We're, we are to find the rate of change. And here, here's the key in the number of students applying for admission. Okay, this problem gives us information about two different quantities, two different, uh, or you could say two different groups of numbers, two different types of numbers. We're given information about number of students that apply. We're also given information about years, a, a two-year span in which that took place. Okay. So there's two different quantities, 
number of students related to the number of years, another quantity uh, over which those students applied. So one way of thinking about this that I found does help some students who are confused, well, what's my y variable and what's my x variable? Because without that, you can't use the formula correctly. I always tell students to look at the part of the phrase or the question uh, where it's your job to come up with an answer. Uh, what is the unknown in this statement and what is the known values? Okay, if you read this carefully and you see what I have in the blue brackets, <clears throat> what is unknown, in other words, what is my job to figure out is the number of students applying for admission that's unknown given uh, a year range of 2004 to 2006. So maybe you remember this from Algebra 1. The unknown is usually associated with the y variable. Okay, let's go back to an xy table. Uh, remember these terms. Um, we have this uh, independent variable, which is our x. It can be any value we want, but we plug that value in in order to determine an output, which we call the dependent variable. Okay, so we're given a value to plug in for x to determine a value that comes out for y. Input and output. Okay, well given a certain year range, again think of x, what will be the output for number of students applying for admission or y. Okay, so what I usually recommend for students in, in word problems like this so they can keep it straight is immediately in this phrase that asks me to come up with the rate of change for a certain number of students. That's the missing, that's the unknown. I usually just tell them to go ahead and label. Uh, since this is bigger, I'm just going to call this y2 and I'm going to call this number y1. Okay, uh, those are the unknowns in this question. It's the part of the problem that I'm supposed to figure out. The years are given. So again, by giving me years, uh, we call that the input or the independent variable or x. Then I can label these as x, x2, x1. And now we're set up to where we can use the formula very easily and quickly. All right, so I'm going to go to the next slide so that I can have a little bit more space. And uh, again, the change in y, uh, you see my symbol here. This is the uh, Greek letter delta, delta y, which means literally, the Greek letter delta means change. The change in y divided by the change in x. All right, so let's take our y2, which we labeled on the previous slide as 60,291, and subtract that from, or subtract from that, our y1, which is 56,878. That's number of students. Divided by years, that's our x variable. And just to match them up, 2006 goes with 60,291. And 2004 goes with 56,878. And now we can find out what this rate of change is. How many students in, how, how much did our admissions increase? Obviously there was an increase, but on average, how much per year? So let's take 60,291, subtract 56,878, and we get 3413 divided by 2. And that gets us 
0.5. Okay, so the rate of change in the number of students, we would say that our number of students admitted to UCLA, I'll just say admissions to UCLA, increased on average since we did an average rate of change by 1706.5 per year. Okay, it is important that um, you show me a number of students per year as your explanation in cases like this. I'll put increased. Okay, and since we're talking about regular people, I would probably say 1707, but you get the picture. Well, I wanted to throw that out at you because uh, we are going to be working with some real-life word problems uh, like this, and I wanted to kind of give you a heads up on how you can set these up and effectively use the rate of change formula. Okay, so uh, getting you ready for some homework problems on um, in your book, uh, you're going to be given some tables from time to time that talk about uh, different data. And uh, this is a, a data chart that obviously tells us that over a certain amount of time, we are increasing in distance in feet. So um, this is, you could think of this as an XY table if you want to label the uh, time, in other words, inputting a certain amount of time would produce an output of a certain distance. Okay, so uh, to make sure that uh, we know exactly what this rate of change is, if it's a constant rate of change, just do some simple uh, subtraction. Remember, it's the change in y. So let's say these two paired together, the change in y, 16 minus 8 divided by the change in x, 4 minus 2, and 8 divided by 2, of course, is 4. And to give myself assurance, uh, sometimes these books can be a little tricky. Uh, we think there's a pattern that's being followed, but when we get down here, maybe that they leave that pattern and they start throwing in some random numbers that do not represent a constant rate of change of 4. So I just always like to be careful. Uh, at least a couple. Uh, let's slide down and look at these. Okay, let's pair these up and do change in y. 32 minus 16 divided by the change in x. 8 minus 4. Uh, 32 minus 16 is 16. 8 minus 4 is 4. We get that same result. And I won't take the time, but um, if we did continue that same process of change in the y's divided by the change in the x, we would end up with that same constant value, that constant rate of change, which is 4. So here's how I'm going to express my answer. Uh, I'm going to put the number 4 as the constant but then I also want you to show me in the units that are provided. Remember, it's y over x. Change in y over the change in x. So feet per minute. Distance over time. Okay. So again, uh, don't forget to show me the units in addition to just coming up with what we'd call the slope. Okay, um, this should be a review for you. Um, we, you've got some problems 12 through 17 where you are given uh, two points on a line and you're asked to determine uh, the slope of the line. Well, again, slope is another way of saying rate of change, constant rate of change. I'm going to drill that in your head because I want you to understand um, that principle that we're really talking about the same thing. So you see my delta y over delta x change in. Here's my slope formula that you probably remember from Algebra 1. So let's see. The slope of this line will be 5 minus negative 3 
divided by 3 minus 1. Be careful here because this is really 8 divided by 2. And so here you're not told anything about units, so it's not required. You can just tell me the number that represents the slope. All right, we'll go ahead and do letter B. Uh, the slope of this line will be negative 9 minus 11, change in Y, divided by 24 minus negative 8, the change in X. So negative 20 over 32, reducing. Uh, we can divide 4 into both of these. 4 into negative 20 is negative 5. 4 into 32 is 8, negative 5 eighths. Okay, so uh, that's what you're going to do on 12 through 17. should be pretty self-explanatory. When you get down to uh, 18 through 21, this block of four problems, uh, you're going to be looking at graphs of lines, and you're going to determine rate of change or slope. Same thing for each of these lines. And the thing I wanted to alert you with is... Um, the units are not just uh, only x-axis 1, 2, 3, 4. As you can see, each one of these units in this particular case is worth 4 points. So 4, 8, 12, 16. And uh, I just wanted you to be careful that you notice the units, how, how the x and y axis are divided up um, in the problems that you're going to be looking at. Okay, so let's just take a look at uh, this example. Uh, let's just get a couple of points on this line. doesn't really matter what they are. Uh, look for some good solid points, like, for example, um, this point right here, according to this, is the point 8, 4. All right, and then um, we'll just pick another pair of points, uh, maybe jump up here. And that point is the point 16, 12. Okay, 16, and remember each one of these lines represents 4. So we use our slope formula. Slope is y2, which I'm calling 12, minus y1, 4, over x2, 16, minus 8. 12 minus 4 is 8, 16 minus 8 is 8, and of course this would have a slope of 1. Easy enough. Okay, let's try this one. Um, pick a couple of points. Notice that uh, the units, I would always pay attention to the units, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, each one of these lines represents 2. So uh, here's a point, 4, 8. And uh, let's get another good solid point. I, I don't trust trying to guesstimate what this is, but uh, here's 12, 4. Okay. And so um, let's do our slope formula. Slope will be y2. Uh, I'm going to just say that this is y2. 4 minus 8, subtract the y's, or the change in the y's, divided by the change in the x's. 4 minus 8 over 12 minus 4, negative 4 over positive 8, which is negative 1 half. And that makes sense. Uh, notice how from left to right the line, uh, you would be walking downhill. And that always indicates a negative slope. All right, uh, we're almost done. Uh, this last block of problems, 23 through 26, look like this. Uh, can we determine rate of change if all we are given is an equation for a line? Well, sure we can if, uh, it's easy to do, if we could just change this equation into slope, intercept, form slope intercept it's it's almost there on letter a um, except we need to solve it for y and to solve for y there's two ways of looking at it you can divide by four on both sides everything divided by four so solving for y gets me y equals three-fourths x 
minus 7 fourths. So anytime an equation is in this form, we call slope intercept form, the rate of change is easy enough to spot. It's the coefficient of x. So in letter A, my answer would be 3 fourths. Okay, letter B. Um, let's just go ahead. There are other ways of finding slope, but I think I'm going to have you do the same thing every time. Just get your uh, equation in slope intercept form, solve it for y, in other words. So uh, let's just go ahead and do that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do here is move the x term with subtraction. So that's going to get me negative 3 fourths y is equal to negative 5 halves x plus 9. Okay, well, to solve for y, I need to multiply by the inverse of negative 3 fourths, which is negative 4 thirds on both sides. Okay, so when you multiply a number times its inverse, the result is 1, so that's just going to be 1y. When I multiply negative 5 halves times negative 4 thirds, that's going to give me positive 20 over 6. Just multiply numerators together, denominators together, but we can go ahead and reduce this. So let's just make this 10 thirds x. And then uh, multiplying 9 times negative 4 thirds, that's negative 36 thirds. Negative 36 thirds is negative 12. So now I'm in slope intercept form. And so finding the slope is pretty easy. I just look at the number in front of x. The coefficient of x is 10 thirds, and so that is my slope. Okay, and you're going to do that same type of thing on 23 through 26. I actually, uh, I actually noticed that uh, this should say 28. I said 26, but it's that entire last block of problems on page 25. Okay. So um, I think I've helped you with this homework assignment. Uh, this is the um, work that we're going to check. Uh, notice on number 22, it's got parts A, B, C, and D to it. But uh, you can skip letter A. You don't have to do the A part. All right. So I hope this helps you have a better understanding, if you didn't already, of uh, rate of change and slope. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know.